Is Hamzat Chimaev trying to distract Paolo Costa from focusing on the task at hand? The two middleweights are set to battle in a clash for the ages at UFC 294 in less than two weeks. Costa is razor focused on teaching the Chechen star a lesson, but Hamzat is allegedly trying to sabotage his training camp, according to Costa's coach, Eric Albarasin. We were in the lobby together. We were outside in the parking lot. They were in the out lobby. I, I mean, tensions were high because, I mean, the last time they saw each other at the UFC PI, you guys saw what almost went down. You know, the whole world saw that. 10 million people saw that video. So, uh, you know, with the biggest fight in UAE history going down uh, in two weeks, we, what is the reason why three weeks ago we're staying at a hotel with no security and, and you know, after that happened, people started calling us in the middle of the night, waking us up. So there's just been some uh, some sabotaging going on on his end, uh, trying to keep us with the jet lag, uh, but it's not gonna work because this time we came out super early to write what was wrong, what happened last time we came out here to Abu Dhabi. Okay. So you know, secret juice cost and now, he's cold. He's calculated, he's recalibrated, he's reformulated, and he's smarter than ever. This time in Abu Dhabi, we're, we're getting that title shot. Moving on, Paige Van Zandt is all set to make her return to fighting. But before we find out more about the story, please take a moment to subscribe to Takedown MMA and turn on those notifications. Thank you. Paige Van Zandt, who has been absent from the fighting arena for over two years, recently expressed her intent to make a comeback in combat sports. Despite her extended hiatus, the 29-year-old athlete mentioned that she is motivated to make a strong comeback for the love of the sport, since financial concerns no longer drive her decision to fight. Recently, she disclosed that she makes more than a million in a day on OnlyFans, way more than what she used to earn during her days in the UFC. Now, if that's true, then why is Van Zant willing to get punched in the face for a few hundred thousand dollars? The answer is simple. She thinks she has unfinished business. Quote, Of course, the last fight that I was supposed to have for BKFC got pulled the week of the fight. I had cut all my weight. I was so excited to fight. I got mega depressed. So I took a little bit of time off, and I'm back in the gym training 100% now. And I feel like I'm in a really good place where I'm training for fun and to get better, not just to prepare for a fight. So I want to continue just kind of doing this, what I'm doing right now. Training to have fun, to get better and learn. And then, once I feel like I'm desperate to fight, which I do really want to, but once I feel like I'm mentally and physically prepared, then I'm going to take a fight. I don't want to just take a fight because I want to. I want to really feel it in my body that I'm ready. So it's coming, though. I am working really hard. Would you like to see Paige Van Zant make a stunning return to fighting? Stipe Miocic thinks he's the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time, a claim that is echoed by his UFC 295 opponent, John Jones. Miocic's former foe, Daniel Cormier, also emphasizes his status as one of the most formidable fighters of his generation, and I'm sure you guys think the same way. However, grappling maestro Gordon Ryan has an opposing stance. Ryan, who recently trained with Jones, finds nothing particularly exceptional about Miocic, and he thinks Bones will have an easy night at UFC 295. Stipe, uh, he doesn't, there's nothing really special that he does as an, as an MMA grappler. Like, he's, he's not bad, but it, it's not like, it's not like he has like an amazing DP. It's not like he has like an amazing ability to hip high stop or an amazing triangle or arm bar, or if he gets mounted on you, you're never going to get out. Uh, he's kind of just like a good generic all around guy and so i think that you know and obviously john studies a lot of tape on him as well i think that john kind of at this point is just interested in doing things that he wants to improve upon as an athlete himself and if there was one thing that i saw that stipe did that was dangerous to john or that i think could give john problems then i would i would force john to be in those positions but uh, there's, there's, Steve is not known as like a super dangerous grappler, so I think it's just overall John is just trying to improve as an athlete. So John is a lot, is a lot like GSP. Uh, he's not the best wrestler in the world. He's not the best striker in the world. He's not the best jiu jitsu in the world. Uh, but when it's time to put things all together, just like George, he does it better than anybody else in the world. And so 
like if you if you get a high level wrestler, he's gonna lose a wrestling match. If you get a high level jiu jitsu guy, there's like an ABCC champion, he'll lose a wrestling match. When it's time to actually fight, he's better than anybody else in the world. What do you guys think? Moving on, who do you guys think would win a fight between Aljamain Sterling and Max Holloway? Sterling is in a hurry to bounce back into the win column following a devastating defeat at the hands of Sean O'Malley at UFC 292. But there's a tiny problem. He doesn't want to cut down to bantamweight. Sterling wants to move up to featherweight and fight Max Holloway, which Daniel Cormier thinks is a very bad idea. I love Max. That's my brother. And Al Jermaine Sterling's my brother too. I don't want to see them dudes fight, but I also don't want to see them dudes fight because Max is too big for Al Jermaine Sterling. Mm, if Ma if mm. Al Jermaine struggled with Sean O'Malley's size, he would be in mm. some real deep trouble with Max Holloway, man. Yeah, I, I tap out on that one. I don't think it's a great, it, it's not a great look for the funk master, RC. However, Sterling begs to differ. He thinks he can hang in there with Holloway. More so, Sterling thinks he can erase his mistakes against O'Malley by taking out one of the best featherweights on the planet. I know he was saying that he likes he likes me, but he doesn't think uh, I should fight Max Holloway. Uh, that that kind of makes me want to just go up right out of the gate and just call him out and just say, you know what, I want to show you guys what's up. Um, I know he said if I struggle with O'Malley's height and, and size, I'm like, but did I actually struggle? I mean, I, I made one mistake compared to the first round where mostly I was pretty disciplined to say that I would struggle. Well, that that kind of that kind of gets me going. That kind of gets me to want to just be like, okay, I'll show you guys what's up. Because I don't think people really understand what I do, big body Aljo, what he can do compared to scrawny but shredded Aljo. It's just it's just a difference. Max is the man, bro. I'm gonna straight, straight up say it. Max is the man. I go out and I beat the man, bro. Come on. And I think it erases my mistake. Does Aljamain Sterling stand any chance against Holloway in a potential featherweight matchup? The UFC's December fight night has suffered a major blow, with Peter Yan pulling out of his scheduled bout against Song Yedong. The event, which is set to take place in China, was originally expected to be headlined by Yan and Yedong. But the UFC is now looking for a new opponent for the Chinese star because the Russian has withdrawn due to injury. Here is what journalist Chris Presnell had to say about the situation, and I quote, As far as the main event on December 9th goes, there was a plan to have Song versus Yan in that spot, but Peter Yan is no longer in that plan. The search continues for an opponent for Song Yedong. On Douyin, or Chinese TikTok, Song Yedong confirmed that Peter Yan was the plan for December 9th and revealed a text from his manager claiming that Yan is injured. That's certainly a big blow because it would have been a really intriguing fight. Who do you think Song Yedong should fight next? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. To stay up to date with the latest happenings in the world of mixed martial arts, please subscribe to Take Down MMA and turn on those notifications. Thank you for your continued love and support, and we'll see you in the next one.